We can do this, guys. The perfect intro begins now. What's up, Wikimaniacs? Today, we have a wife who learned about her husband's double life. A boyfriend who lies to support his fetish. Parents who punish their son by shaving his head. And an office Karen bullies the office baker. But that's not all. If you are a patron, you get an extra bonus story on Mondays now. And this one is, uh, we're going to do a little bit of role play. Uh, and Ooh. you'll just have to be a patron to see what that's about. But uh, if that piques your interest, patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network. Reddit on wiki starts now. And they said it couldn't be done. They doubted so, me. They said so no proud. way could Sean do a regular intro like a normal podcaster. So clean, no f bomb. Not yet. It was beautiful. <laughs> Don't jinx it. it Knock on wood beautiful. somewhere. We couldn't fucking believe it, y'all. Damn we couldn't it. fucking believe it. <laughs> 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 oh man, what's up? Uh, uh, it's your boy Sean hosting a Monday Reddit readings episode with my boys John and Josh. Hi, say hi. The double J's say hi. Double J's. Double J's. <laughs> All right, y'all got anything to say before we go ahead and hop into the very first story? Uh, we'll save it for the end. Oh, okay, sure. Whoa. Oh, uh, go ahead, jo- uh, Josh. You I have was something just to say? Say congrats to Sienna for finishing half marathon. Uh, <gasps> beat her time that from her last one, so personal best, killing it. What's that like? Uh, oh, while we're know. congratulating everybody, uh, congrats to Juliet for releasing her. I was going to do that in the end. Yeah. <laughs> but, okay, let's uh, talk we'll about plug that it at then. the end. But uh, while everyone's listening now, the link I'm sure will be in the show notes. So, and we'll talk about it yes. more at the end. But yes, Juliet made a cookbook. Also, it's Nancy amazing. and I danced in a in a. Uh, we did some dance life shit. Like Saw we used that. to, dude. Uh, yeah, you for can the first move, time. brother. Uh, yeah, who who knew? Uh, the body still is like riding a bike, sort of. How uh, sore were you after that? My knees feel like what I imagine John's feel like. Uh, Damn, so you like want to die. Yeah, they, they hurt bad. And I took like the stairs to work uh, oh. this week, you know, because I always take the stairs going up. Yeah. Uh, but I was like, holy moly, what a goddamn mistake. Yeah, I saw you doing those moves and I was like, that's got to hurt. After <laughs> so I know Jesus. that man's body. <laughs> right. Yeah, so congrats to all I our wish I could dance like that, Sean. You, I mean, you could. Uh, you no, could. there's dance classes. I can't but either. Yeah. Uh, and Josh, for obvious reasons. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do a, we'll do a TikTok dance whenever uh, we're all Ooh, meet up. Teach us. It'll be uh, yet again you one need, of our lowest performing TikToks of all time. You the need a lot of patience. Out, I put a lot of work into that stupid ad, and uh, it was everyone hated it. My God, if you know, so you know. Funny. I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> Uh, was it mildly infuriating that the uh, results was were terrible. pretty low? Was it <laughs> slash mildly? <laughs> mildly infuriating. Dude, oh my God. And I was like, wow, we really stepped out of our comfort zone. This is uh, this will be interesting. Fucking zero <laughs> likes. Don't do that shit again. <laughs> okay. People don't like it when we... People don't like it when we try to actively, like, you know, venture out. Yeah, <laughs> like, no. You stick to the same. You are under one thing <laughs> you and fucking one read thing read that only. sad story, you motherfucker. <laughs> no, like the, okay. the Mama Lin story. Mama Lin story. Uh, besides That's Mama true. Lin. Mama yeah, awesome. Awesome. You better not be fucking happy. Don't like that oops all happy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Give me that depressing stuff. Put it in my uh, veins. Inject it into my life. I need that negativity. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, are you ready for the first story then? Because it jumps right into the negativity. Let's get it. I can feel a TikTok uh, already. Let's go. Oh. Uh. All right. Here we go. I, 35 female, discovered my husband, 38 male, infidelity and his double life thanks to a post on Facebook. It, it would it's always be Facebook. Facebook. It's always Facebook. <laughs> oh, God. I can only see where this is going to go. My husband and I have been married for 10 years and have 
two children together. He travels often. I also want to say that about eight months ago, I discovered that I was infected with an incurable STD. Oh. He blamed me buddy. for this, saying that I was the unfaithful one. Well, could you imagine the balls to be like, <laughs> like knowing you're cheating and then being like, no, you're the unfaithful one and like yeah. Putting, yeah. pinning it on them? Like, that's the fucking crazy. Gaslighting is crazy. Yeah. He's, a, he's shit. a shitty trifling dude. That's what he is. STD, baby. Wow. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Where'd you come from? He's with back, y'all. He's fucking back. <laughs> uh, well, I was browsing Facebook in a mother's group. In that group, it is a, a group where mothers ask for help with children, ask for donations, share experiences, memes, etc. In that group, a mother shared that she would give her husband a laxative tea so that he wouldn't go to a soccer game the next day. It was all mockery and laughter in the comments of the post and telling her to update the result. I am a person who likes to read comments. And while reading comments, I unfortunately saw a profile that had a photo of a woman with my husband in it. What the <gasps> fuck? Gas. Holy, the levels are crazy. <laughs> I started watching. I don't know what watching means. But I guess uh, maybe like perusing right, the just profile. Looking at the yeah. comments, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I started watching, and apparently they got married civilly. My husband what? created another profile, but it has a different name and surname. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. This seems like a Todd situation. <sighs> a Todd? Oh, we just flamed the name Todd. Now. Oh, yeah, oh I wasn't reason. there for that one. But yes, yeah, I that was the, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Todd. Todd's <laughs> just catching strays. They have a child. Uh, I damn. think that child has his false last name because she uploaded a post where she went to register the child's birth certificate and placed the full name there as if she was proud of it. Mm. I posted in the same group now that they have the option to post anonymously and several gave me advice and we deduced that possibly the other woman did not know because of what she shared on her profile. That I wrote to right. her yeah. and was surprised that that bitch did know that he was married. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly corrected. I mean, they, still, in, in the order of asshole, it's your husband number one, for right? Sure. Like, sure. uh, <laughs> so I, I think it's both if she knew. But it's definitely, it's definitely, it's oh, definitely both. It. She's, she's definitely an complicit as well. she knows. They're like the same level now at this point. I'm just saying like, no, they're not the same level at all. <laughs> I think it's him no, at like the if top. The, if, no, I, if, if but if you know knew, that the other person is married and you yeah, still and have kids, you're an asshole and a horrible person. I still think he's worse. Oh, <laughs> they're in the same plane for me. No, 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 no. He's worse. Oh, I they're think both it's bad. not very they're, far. In their levels, it's they're touching skin at this point. Like they're in the same plane. They're definitely I'm touching not saying, skin. I'm not saying she's like significantly better than him. I'm saying it's close, but I'm still saying he's, you know, still the one cheating and doing all that shit. Where yeah, she's, I guess you like, could say she's not adultery. technically cheating. <laughs> yeah. She's just complicit. Mm. Yeah. Which, well, which but is she, sometimes the worst. Like it's also bad. So I don't. Just the both, varying both opinions. I just, I, think, I just think they're both terrible in the same way now. Okay. Well, we disagree yeah, on I mean, that. I yeah, our opinions don't have to slightly worse. Been. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> they have been married for two years, and their baby is approximately fourteen months old. But mm. they're not technically married because we never got a divorce. Their marriage is not valid. I have hired a lawyer, and I took all the evidence, and I am in the divorce process. Since when I complained, he preferred her. He left the house to live with her. Besides Damn. this, Jesus. he refuses to give alimony, claiming that he has another child to support, and that if he has to give alimony to my children, he will seek to give the minimum payment, even if he has to quit his job. What a deadbeat, Oh, my bro. God. What How do I proceed with my life? I feel like I am very limited in rebuilding my life because of the STD he has given me and being a single mother. Sorry for my English. I am not American. <laughs> First of all, you probably you wrote that be, better than most Americans. <laughs> you could be from other countries and speak English as well. <laughs> yeah, both, both funny. statements are true. 
Um, oh, I never give credit. I'm so sorry. This was no. posted in, uh, cross posted from r slash relationship ground score advice from, you guessed it, Z Mitch 8. Hey, there Ooh. we go. Uh, I mean, if you're going through the process, I would imagine the judge is going to side with you with all of the you know, evidence provided. Evidence. So, I mean, hopefully he doesn't let them get away. And if he texted you or said that he's trying to get the minimum, hopefully that's somewhere where you can document that and be like, yo, Hey, here's what he's planning yeah. to do. Uh, and then hopefully the to judge, quit his job to avoid paying. That's absolutely insane. Insane. <laughs> like, crazy, crazy. What a fucking scumbag. Yeah. Yeah. Not only to you, of course he has a scumbag to you, uh, to because of, he cheated, but like to actually, you know, fucking try to put your kids at a disadvantage is fucking unhinged. Behavior. Yeah. This guy is such a piece of shit just from the get go <laughs> from the fucking SDD yeah. thing and then blaming it on mm-hmm. you when he, like Josh said, he knows uh, he's, he's married to somebody else as well. Yeah. Like this is crazy. Yo, if I was the other woman in that situation too, like why would you be want to be with someone like that? They purposely tank same. their life to not support their kids mm-hmm. what makes you think that he's not gonna do the same thing to you now that your le- your marriage is not legal he can fuck around and get another pre- girl pregnant and can ditch you on the side as well like yeah it, it, insane behavior why sh- why that other partner partner would go along well with it if i were i i'd leave this for the, the, the curb like both women should just leave this person but yeah yeah well, what the, if- the, the reason i'm not like uh, i mean she is an asshole right? like like i said but the reason I'm less is because I don't know what he's said to her to convince her that this is okay. You know what I mean? Like what he has told the other partner, like he could be like, oh, she's crazy or like built her as this villain in, in her mind. And so she doesn't give a fuck. That's, that's where, fair, that's where I'm like, uh, like fair. you're an asshole for, you know, being with a married man. But also I don't know what he's painted because he's already tried gaslighting OP. Yeah. So he's shown the ability extent. to manipulate and <laughs> yeah. gaslight. So, so I don't know what extent he's gone true. to on the he other could end. could have brainwashed this other person as well. Yeah. Uh, but I got to well, say, you know, if you're fake married <laughs> to a uh, already married man. Fake married is crazy. <laughs> which is, I with mean, a fake name and then yeah. you got your kid <laughs> with the fake name. You don't feel a little bit like betrayed or like yeah. anything. I'm the second family kind of thing. Like Yeah, nothing. the fake name. You don't even get the real name. Like that's wild. Yeah. I thought the twist was going to be that she finds out that that's actually his real name and she's found the fake name. I thought that was going to be the twist. Be and I mean, I thought this was going to be like a secret agent or some shit, man. Like living a double life. Double James Bond. Bond. James no, Bond. Double yeah. life as in a whole other family. Oh that's, my God. Yeah, that's, Dude. Yo, that is just having, insane. Having one, I can imagine having, you know, uh, oh, a, a whole life. No, I don't have to imagine. I live. I live. Having a life is <laughs> exhausting, guys. Just yeah, managing I'm barely there, one brother. life. One <laughs> life I is I exhausting. Even, I can't even deal with this one right now. Two, uh, two, two whole <laughs> lives. Two whole lives. What are you doing? I mean, I mean, you have two jobs, Sean, kind of this podcast and your actual job. That's true. That's true. Uh, uh, so it's a lot of work, I imagine. Yeah, but, it's hard. Uh, I, and yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, two whole families. Crazy. Gotta dedicate, and I assume he's just not dedicating time to either one that that well. Oh, no. not a proper amount up yeah. at all. Uh, if, yeah. if he has Probably zero empathy for the kids, minimum. you gotta imagine he's not very present at home. No, when he I don't know how there. he has a job. To be honest, honest. That's, where do you get that energy? Like, yeah. yo, you need you need to be studied just for the energy alone. I don't give a shit about you as a person, but my guy, I I, I need some of that in my life because <laughs> I'm family. constantly tired. Like double five. Where? Where is it in your, what kind of gas do you put in your body, bro? Like uh, unleaded, like you were 87, 91. What do you have? Cause I'm jealous. <sighs> Bring it with grease. All right. This is our second story. This is, oh, it has been deleted, but we got the screenshots, boys. There hey. you go. All is not lost. This second story is from r slash confessions posted from, or posted by, Outside ground score, Flamingo, ground score, two, four, six. Flamingo's back. <laughs> and not, and uh, they'll be back later this episode too. Four times in one week is pretty crazy. Crazy. Kudos that to is, you. I don't know what the record is, but it's got to be up there. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I guess this is equal. I don't think there's a trigger warning, but uh, just be warned. This is a uh, OP is pretty despicable, and uh, I guess gaslighting or manipulation is also in play here. So, so the last guy then. <laughs> so essentially, the last guy also okay. a scumbag. Is cool. he worse? One could say. Uh, one could okay. say. You know, don't it depends. That. Different situations. Both times. Apples both and OPs. oranges. This yeah, is yeah. okay. Is a boyfriend lies to support his own fetish. I uh, does he suck his own dick? No, that would be much less problematic. That. <laughs> yeah, because we support that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are we fist bumping? I can't yeah, see we are. the story. Okay, fist bump, baby. <laughs> All right. I, 26-year-old male, currently live with my girlfriend, 24-year-old female. And, you know, more evidence that this is, uh, you know, while close, this does rule in my favor. You said 26, favor. 24? Yeah. I mean, that one that's is not too, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's fine, Sean. <laughs> but I'm just saying, where the story goes, it's just more evidence for my rule. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, but, okay. Uh, but yeah, but in, in, the, in, in the grand scheme of things, that's fine, y'all. Don't worry about that. Don't get yeah. on my yeah. ass for that one. <laughs> I like how you're just trying to get more evidence. Yeah, I'm just trying to get role. more evidence for my point, really. Every story, uh, I'm just trying to choose ones with age gaps. What's so her age? Like, what's her age? <laughs> <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a big board in the background. We can't see. It's just yeah, a Look at, look that, look at you, fucking you, Dane Cook graph. marrying his longtime <laughs> girlfriend uh, who's aged of 24 or something like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. Fuck you, Dane yeah. Cook. Yeah. You fucking yeah. joke stealer. Anyways, <laughs> she, uh, she has no idea the lengths of my own fat fetish. Basically. Uh, wait, a uh, uh, what? Fat fetish. Basically, okay. I think that bigger is better. This is okay. a disgusting comment, the way he words this. All the way up to the point of immobility, which is my personal limit. I <laughs> okay. Yeah, so he... His ideal situation is him to get a woman to not be able to move and then to him be like, well, that's too much. And then dip, which is interesting. Fucking okay. Monstrous. I mean, y you can like any kind of body type you want, I guess. Okay, no, but to push them to immobility and then to leave once they leave there them after you push them. Yeah, there. That's oh, I was I was just thinking like he's trying to find someone like that. He's not pushing anyone to that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. We'll, well, we're about to find okay. out. Okay. Okay. I, I may, well, I may you, be yeah, getting you've read the story, the so I can, here. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, <laughs> I'm concerned now. Okay. Yeah. I've had this fetish since I was a teenager. It's, and also I've watched, uh, what is it? Thousand pound sisters or something like that. Okay. Well, I thought you were going to say And then one of the girls first. <laughs> always like has a boyfriend who is very much, I forget the term that they have for it, but they, they feed them, uh, Ooh. Because okay. it feeds into, their, into this type of oh, fetish. True. So it. it's like they like they're trying to you know, because for health reasons, being five hundred pounds is not That's advised. Not good for you know you. what I mean? Yeah. So okay. they'll like the sisters are trying to lose weight, but one of them dates like constantly dates dudes who are you know telling actively her like oh, you don't need to do that. yeah actively going against trying yeah what they're going trying against to do for their own body yeah, yeah okay. going against her health. That's so gross. this guy is saying he's essentially one of those guys. Gross. Okay. My girlfriend was fat when we met and sort of insecure about it, but also bought into the body positive stuff to a certain extent. She was about 215 pounds at 5'5 five five two years ago. Since meeting and moving in with me, she has gained like 45 me. more pounds. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was about to say me. Uh, <laughs> that's me right now. <laughs> I mean, it's not, that's not bad. I mean, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's, but, yeah. but it hurts. I'm not fine. <laughs> <laughs> right. But there's other people who live healthy and, uh, and can be that way yeah. as well. Uh, since move, meeting and moving in with me, she has gained 45 more pounds, putting her at 260 pounds and considered morbidly obese. I'm considered morbidly obese, y'all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that famous story. <laughs> yeah. While she's definitely concerned about the health risk and everything, she simply eats too much and exercises too little for her to stop slowly gaining weight. Nevertheless, she is very naturally pretty and is mostly confident about her looks. Due to my compliments, her naturally pretty face, body positive messaging on social media, and a family slash friend group that is devoid of brutally honest people. 
God, the way he writes this makes me so sick. Anyways, okay. it's just like he's he's making it sound like those good things like are are I don't know I don't know I j- I just don't like like it. Anyways, not positives. Yeah. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. It's yeah, like, it just, yeah, all these just, positive things are working into my favor of oh, manipulation. I yeah. It's one of those classic Reddit stories of like incel fantasies is kind of how I'm hearing this uh, shit, just how yeah. that's written out. Um, I put on a facade, well, which further, you know, and yeah, I'm I'm talking too much. I'll just read the story, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say. Yeah, I'm, I'm I hate this guy so much that I keep commenting before <laughs> the listener understands the story. So that's my apologies for coming. Yeah, next. right now I'm like, okay, he sounds maybe like a supportive boyfriend. I have no idea. Like, yeah, that's that, and that's that's all. Without me. the context you've provided, I'm like, you know, maybe he's fine, but he sounds fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I no, guess okay. it's not. <laughs> this next sentence: I put on a facade of a boyfriend who loves her no matter her size. Okay, and that I'll has just it. a mild preference for plus size women. But I am consciously aware that my attitude has caused her to deprioritize losing weight since she already has a fit man who loves her no matter her size. I stalk the house with her favorite treats and occasionally joke with her that I'm fattening her up. If she ever wants to occasionally go to the gym or make a healthier meal choice, I encourage her every now and again. This makes her think that I would have no issue with her losing a substantial amount of weight. In reality, though, I know that her exercising slash dieting efforts will be intermittent at best and that she's not going to lose a lot of weight anytime soon without making some serious lifestyle changes that she simply isn't going to make without a wake-up call. I hope no wake-up call comes for a few years and a few dozen pounds at least. Jesus. She still acts and dresses like a conventionally attractive woman, and for some reason, the thought of Her being delusionally confident about her body in public really turns me on. Delusionally confident? Yeah. What the the fuck? She still, and he says she still dresses and acts like a conventionally attractive woman. Yeah, that was fucked up as well. Which, you know, makes it sound like he doesn't think she's attractive. Uh, Yeah. Oh, and like calling her delusional for being confident in her body is absolutely insane. Yes. So he doesn't really support her. Is basically what no. he's saying. He's just he's just using it to get his fetish. Fucking kink. fetish yeah. fulfilled. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The other night she went clubbing with some girlfriends. We live in LA, so there's a very popular club scene with lots of slender, conventionally attractive women. And she Why wore an outfit that, that probably yeah. would only fit properly if she was thirty pounds lighter. It was designed to be tight and revealing anyway, and her obese body only made it more so. Her fat was bulging out everywhere with muffin top fat rolls and cellulite on full display. She shared videos and pictures of that night out on social media, and I knew what she really looked like. A bloated, delusional fat woman. It turns me on so much to know that the skinny LA girls in the club and other men were likely judging her, and she was oblivious to it. He likes that he he thinks other people are judging her, and he likes that? That's fucked up. I don't think this guy has like that type. I think he has a humiliation kink at this point. Like it's (sighs) kind of, but for other people. So it's for other people. Yeah. Yeah, It's fucked up. You guys see where I'm coming from when I say I I do now. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The hate was coming in strong before the hate (laughs) should have, but nonetheless deserved hate. Justified. Yes. Yeah. 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 Fuck this guy. Her friends all much slimmer than her. All encourage her confidence to, quote unquote, support other women and all that. I don't really care why they do it. I just love that no one in her life is going to tell her the hard truth. And I'll just enjoy being with such an attractive, to me, woman. Oh, dude. I fucking this guy's hate this fucking, guy. I fucking yeah. hate and this guy I don't so much. condone violence. But <laughs> I, yeah, like what the fuck kind of shit is that? Like so many yeah. backhanded compliments and that. Like, oh, she well, just thinks so she's focused. pretty. She blah, blah, blah. This, what are you talking about, man? This is crazy. Well, he clearly doesn't care. Like, he's never, and not once in that story did he mention, like, personality, who she is, like, uh, like no. other than her weight. And he just, he focused on weight in every scenario. Like, her friends are slimmer. Uh, it goes to a nightclub where, you know, girls. She's conventionally pretty. Yeah, where she's not conventionally pretty. Or the nightclub people are conventionally pretty. Like, he's very 
focused on uh, just aesthetics of people and not who they are as people. And it's yeah. it's gross to like fetishize someone that much where it's just it's like you clearly don't care about them. You're just using her uh, and and probably, you know, it sounds like leading her towards an unhealthy lifestyle if you're just force feeding her or whatever he's doing, like joking about that. Like it sounds like he probably is feeding her unhealthier than maybe she wants to be. Who knows? Uh, it's crazy. I'm at loss for words with this guy. Like I said, yeah, this guy, I don't know what the first time I read it. Uh, and then I was rereading it to you guys and the Wikimaniacs the whole time. I'm just like, it kind of makes my skin crawl. Like the, uh, yes. just like his, like for him to be so comfortable saying all these things to her face and then to just be like, so diabolical behind her back. Uh, and uh, w- yeah. we deal with a lot of that, I guess, you know, there's a lot of diabolical people who, you know, are lying to people in their lives. And we, we deal with a lot of that in these stories, but I don't know. This one just felt like it's just especially so calculated. It yeah, is. And especially like, 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 like does not care about really. Them like, at all. He mentioned that she cares about her health, but he never mentioned his own concerns about her health. Yeah. Like just the yeah. fact that he's like, oh, my kink is up into immobility and then I'm out, which and then like given his actions later in the story, it, it just implies to me that he would be OK uh, leaving. No. Yeah. He would be OK <laughs> just with getting out, just this woman her. Yeah. up to the point to where she is immobile. And then he would just be like, well, that's Peace out. Uh, my yeah, I got what I done. needed. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah. Which yeah, is so back to my point, gross. he doesn't care about her as a person. Yes. He just sees her as a, and, and that's, as a body. And that's, and that's the part that like disturbs me the most. You know, like if I found out that like if like let's say like Julia, like everything she does is just a facade, right? Like you get so sucked into having a supportive partner, and on like and you you kind of see like oh hey this person is supportive of me and all that. Of course, your confidence is gonna go up. And and if I ever find out that that was all a lie. And I was just to satisfy some sort of a, a need to feel better about themselves or like a kink that needs to be, you know, appeased in some way. Yeah. I would be devastated. Yeah. Not just like physically, because of course, like all the damage that he's doing to her body already, like, you know, doing all this stuff. But like, I would just be done with everything. Yeah. You know, it's, well, it just it, it makes you question everything and going forward. Everything. Like, cause, exactly. Cause like, she deserves a partner who's supportive in her body and who she is as a person, uh, like genuinely. Uh, right. And so like not just going for forward, like a sex kink. Uh, yeah, exactly. So going forward, and, it's like. And, and, the, and the, I'm sorry for you here, Josh. Yeah. Sorry, sorry that's for like saying. cutting you off as <laughs> well. Ahead. Like, but the thing is, too, is it seems like. The, the girl in this story, she knows that she has work to do, right? Like she knows that she's aware. And for a lot of times, like uh, that's that's kind of the, the battle with a lot of people is like, hey, you know, like oblivious to their situation. But this person is very much aware and, and wants to try. But the manipulation and the gaslighting of a partner who 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 just like on a surface just be, oh, man, like, yeah, you're OK. You're going to be fine and all that. But really, it's it's, it's just so diabolical, like. It, and it's easy to fall into that trap of feeling comfortable because someone is gassing you up, you know, but it, yeah. it's, this is evil. This is top five evil people that we <laughs> probably, and we say that it changes a lot by the week, but this is a horror movie, a horror movie character. Like this guy is just straight up the devil. I was going to say at a certain point, the evil just becomes blended and they're all kind of the same. Right. They're evil. all pretty evil. <laughs> it's like the same level of. Uh, of of hell, you know what I mean. It's we like really need to levels. have. We really need to have a Wikimaniac just someone's, give us the, someone's the top to ten list of evil people. Maybe uh, we'll do a year <laughs> end where we go over the try and figure out the top ten. It would be or, good doing. Year. Uh, we could do it for our our, our live in person live stream. Mm, yeah, yeah, I could do something that could like be that. A good one. <laughs> We're gonna rank the top ten most evil. This is like uh, or wait, cutting or into wait till ten, March. Tennis pod territory. <laughs> we'll do like a we'll do a, a March a, a uh, live March, stream like a and then March we can do madness, March yeah. madness like shots and thoughts used to do. We've there's bound to have at least like what sixteen people that oh, we, we could get a say sweet sixteen evil. easily. We yeah, could do this well, for two years. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh my god, really number cool. one, Randy Orton. From episode three. <laughs> <laughs> With the cookies? Right. Yeah, didn't let them have if a cookie. cookies cookie. sound great to you, wait till you hear this next ad. We'll be Holy right back. Holy shit. Woo! 
Hey, boys, describe your life with one word. Busy. Hungry. Funny that you say both of those, because I got the perfect solution for you. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Okay, I'm listening. Tell me more about how else it'll free up some time for me. If you're too busy to cook but still want to eat well, Factor Factor has you covered. No prepping, no chopping, no trips to the grocery stores. Just pop in Factor's fresh, never frozen meals in the microwave and you have delicious food waiting for you in under two minutes. Only two minutes? So like me when I... Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Stop that. With Factor, you also have 34 plus flavor-packed options to choose from every week. And if you're on your fitness grind, trying to be conscious of what you eat, Factor has calorie-smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving, or protein-plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Who doesn't love gains? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Is that what WWE? Yeah. Uh, Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Speaking of this, how can the Wikimaniacs gain... The these meal kits for them to eat. They can head straight to factormeals.com slash wiki50 and use code wiki50 to get 50% off. That's code wiki50 at factormeals.com slash wiki50 to get 50% off. Mm, the smell of butts, I mean, freshly baked cookies. Are we ready for Sean. the third story? Sean, are you feeling okay? You've been on this episode. On, you're on fire. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Crazy. Is the, so the stress tired. just make you a better host? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Remember that one time I had COVID and I hosted the best episode I've ever hosted? And it was so good. <laughs> God you need to damn. put your body in shock. Yeah. We need I to, truly like, can't be at a hundred percent to be at a hundred percent. You know what I mean? That's crazy. <laughs> God damn, that was seamless. Oh. oh. All right, are we ready for our third story of the day, boys? Hell yeah. Ready. Go off, King. <laughs> wow, thank you. <laughs> wow. This is uh, cross-posted uh, from r slash parenting, cross-posted by The Mojita. Uh, this is parents shave their son's head as a punishment. Ooh. Mm. I've been here before, y'all. I was going to say, didn't this happen to you, <laughs> Sean? It was definitely happened to me. You? Yeah. Does the kid have a mullet? <laughs> they yeah, shaved did the it kid off? try to have a Jedi haircut <laughs> with a little Padawan rat tail? With a little rat tail. <laughs> and their parents said, absolutely no way. <laughs> you know, it's sad. I, I only grew, like, I really only had a buzz cut up until, I don't know, a couple of, like, I want to say like six years ago, like all throughout high school. I just, that's all I had. Well, I can't imagine you with a buzz cut, Josh. It's wild, I know, but that's all I had. <laughs> I imagine as the soccer player rock star, you would have had long hair. No. Yeah. No, no, I went more of the uh, long, low cut. Long, luscious hair. <laughs> Aerodynamic look, you know what I mean? <laughs> Plus, I don't think a lot of soccer players have, like, long hair. Well, I just think, when I think soccer players, I think of, like, uh, Beckham, who had long hair at that mm. time. Yeah, true. He did. Yeah, you're right. But I think he was, like, an anomaly. Yeah, he was also uh, like borderline a model, but also yes, he is. Josh, a model. you are borderline a model, Chris Evans. That's not true. Sheesh. That's not Sheesh. true at all. Uh. All right, <laughs> third story of the day. Let's get into it. My Aww. son is eight years old and in the third grade. He also really doesn't like school. If the material Same. gets too difficult, he shuts down. And basically just starts guessing answers. Same. That's what I did in university. Yeah, I was going to say. Same. <laughs> Third grade. That's me today at work. <laughs> uh, a. A. That's sure. always C. Always C is my first B or guess. C. I don't B know. or C. Yeah. C's right. gets degrees. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> he has always been this way since the first grade. We have gotten him tutors before in the past when he was in first and second grade. And that seemed to have helped. He usually struggles with reading only and has always been very good at math. But now, with the most latest progress report, he's failing in both math and reading. I always ask if he has homework every day from school and go over it with him if he has any trouble. I reached out to his teacher to have a conference to discuss what can be done 
and how we could help him moving forward because we all want him to succeed. Okay, now to move on to the punishment. We always give this boy everything and take him anywhere that he wants, especially when he's doing well. But I need him to understand that when you don't pay attention and you play around in class and or fail, there are consequences. So, and by the way, I got to say, all one long sentence, not a single <laughs> period. Of Holy <laughs> shit. You have failed you reading. You failed English. <laughs> you have failed reading. <laughs> Holy <parent>. shit. <laughs> anyway, sorry. It's, I was just getting angry from not having. That's crazy. Having to guess where the sentence ends. <laughs> uh, so we shaved his head because he's been wanting to grow it out. And we went to this point because no other form of punishment seems to be working. We've taken away his PS5, we've taken away his tablet, his TV, his extracurricular activities, etc. So, we took away the one thing we knew he loved the most, which was his hair. Of course, it's nothing permanent and it will grow back, but we just want to get it through to him. We're also looking at getting him a tutor again. My mom saw what I and my husband did to his hair and is now making me feel like a horrible parent because of it. You and are. now yeah. I'm second guessing myself and I feel down. You I just want to know if us shaving our son's hair was too much. It will grow yes. back. This is nothing permanent, but now I can't help but feel guilty. Any suggestions on what I can do differently going forward? Was shaving his head too extreme? Uh, look, we're not parents. Yeah, Let's we always got to begin with okay? that caveat. We got to put we got to put that caveat, but to me, if, if my child was having that situation, right, and it seemed like they're not excelling in school, the very, very, actually, I would never even consider punishing them, right? Positive reinforcement always works, in my opinion. And to me, uh, this parent, like, completely missed a bunch of steps. And one of them is, in, uh, one of those steps is considering that, hey, maybe your child has a learning disability, yeah. right? So instead of like, you know, getting them the treatment that they can, or at least getting um, some sort of a screening to, to identify if they have those issues, the first thing you do is to remove the one thing that they actually cared about, right? And, you know, like it comes in phases, you know, like a lot for a lot of kids, school is not the best thing. I struggle a lot with memorization. Uh, and I feel like school systems is, is straight up just regurgitating knowledge and regurgitating shit that you learn from class. Yeah. And for you not to consider that your kid is probably struggling with that and it's not their fault at all, their yeah. brain probably just wired a certain way. And for you to just go straight up punish your kid for that reason, yes, you're a, you're an asshole of a parent. You know, it's not Friday, but <laughs> you, you just got to be more open minded that there's more to it than grades. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yes, just because your kid can't remotely like memorize every single aspect or like know all these different formulas, you're setting them up for more failure uh, like in the future as well, because now they're going to hate studying. They're going to hate learning some more because all they're going to think about is, hey, remember that one time I fucked up my math? The one thing I liked got shaven off, like my hair got shaven off. So mm -hmm. now you're probably giving them a disadvantage in the future because they're probably not going to want to learn in the future. You know, so I just think you took like a big step, or like you missed a big step as a parent, possibly getting your kid a diagnosis for a learning disability. But no, you went straight to punishing. So, yeah, you should feel guilty. You should feel bad because you done fucked up and you fucked up your kid for a long time. Yeah, I agree. I think associating school with punishment is not a good idea because no. now they're going to want to do it even less. Uh yeah, as someone who also, you know, had their struggles in school, math was my weak subject. Uh, Same here, and I'm Asian. I'm supposed to be good at math. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but I, I excelled in other places, like English or something, like other other classes like that. There was, every kid's going to have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, all you can do is encourage them in their strengths. So you said he's good at math. He's struggling right now. Um, maybe that's because he's getting punished so much. Uh, yes. Not wanting to do it. Uh, just encourage them in, in what they're good at, help them in what they're not. I had to get a math tutor. I mean, it's not the end of the world. He's third grade. <laughs> I mean, I get like third grade is like you're starting the base math and, and learning stuff like that, but it's never too late to catch up. If he's uh, falling behind, you can get tutors and 
like it's not the end of the world as long as he's passing and eventually getting the the stuff it took me forever to learn was is it integers the, the negatives and positives two negatives still equals, don't know that it took me forever to, <laughs> to learn that I, I, you learn that in like grade four and i didn't learn it properly until like grade 10 and it was just like uh, like th there's always time to catch up and it's not going to be a defining feature of your child like as long as they're passing they're paying attention and yeah like john said maybe get a diet like checked out maybe they do have some sort of dis like learning disability or something like that and that's okay they can get you know whatever treatment they need for that and uh maybe it'll help a bit um but yeah i i think taking away something they love because they're not doing well in school is the wrong way to go about it uh, mm -hmm. Not every kid's going to excel and it's just, uh, and that's fine. Yeah. And I, I feel like that's uh, in those formative years, like it, it's good to find out like your strengths and weaknesses. And like what Josh said, if I was a parent in that situation, like, yeah, I'm going to focus on like, Hey, you're good at English. You're good at writing. You're good at art. Let's, 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 you know, implement that more in like your daily life. And it, it seems like to me, like you also didn't just hearing the story that they didn't really take um accountability for you know like their son's like difficulties because mm -hmm. immediately they went straight to the teacher like hey what can we do and then immediately they're like hey, i'm gonna get you a tutor but what did you do as a parent did you sit down with your uh, your son and be like hey what's going on like why are you struggling uh, uh why are you struggling is there any way we can help you with this type of shit it sounds like but she uh, or they did like every night they sat down with homework and stuff like that. So I'm not saying they're the worst parents ever. It's just like with this step, you went too far and it's like, there are other things you could have done. Um, and you have to realize like your son, your son might not be a straight A student and that's okay. Uh, I was yeah. like a straight B student and I made it. I'm here. I'm still alive. So I don't know. I, I think, I think they did do that kind of stuff too, but yeah, you're right. They didn't check, like get them checked out and see if they had something yeah. like that. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, Again, we're not parents. So we're not. Parents so. has like <laughs> different gotta, step. Yeah. I'm just saying, well, if, if I was in that situation, this, this is what we would do in, in that. In that Having case. no yeah. kids, this is what we think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. All right, was guys. That, are we ready? Was that your uh, parents' journal entry, Sean? I had to ask. Yeah, no, except I just I just got it because my haircut looked dumb, not because I failed anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you let your friend cut your hair into this? The mullet was fine, <laughs> but this is one step too far. All right, guys. Last story of the night. This one's from r slash petty revenge from hey. yet again. Outside ground score, Flamingo ground score, 246. Ooh. And John, uh, this one involves a little bit of HR. <gasps> Let's do this. Wow. I'm going to get heated, right? Uh, Possibly, or you might just laugh. I think personally, there might be... Uh, I would complain to HR uh, if I was. I, I just don't know how some of this stuff is legal. I guess, but uh, okay, I, let's, you're let's here to, to explain. <laughs> okay, this is the office Karen bullies the office baker. Okay, um, is Baker where's, like the bail version of Karen? No, no. Baker as in like the they bake. Like to bake it. Yeah, my joke. Oh. My joke is going to be, where's the office candlestick maker? <laughs> is that a thing? The, the the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Whoa. Okay. Come on. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. This is officially sure. titled Office Revenge on a Karen who didn't think my girlfriend's baking was, quote, up to par, end quote. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Didn't know eat it then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> my girlfriend is currently being her adorable self and baking in the kitchen. She's doing her thing with the hangover on in the background and her favorite giant bear hoodie on. I think today what, she's what using- What a mood. <laughs> what a mood. <laughs> should... <laughs> today she's using Just Hood Lemon Bar recipe. If you don't know it, then check it out. They're bloody delicious. Okay. But this reminded me uh, of a situation from a few years ago. My girlfriend and I worked for the same company, but in different areas on different floors. This was all pre-COVID. My girlfriend loved to bake- and she enjoys sharing more than she enjoys eating the stuff herself. She would bring in her goods maybe three times a week. The head of her department, Matt, got a little tin and made a sign or something that said something like, if you enjoyed a treat, please leave a contribution so she can continue baking. Then there was Karen. I go down to my girlfriend's floor one day to talk to someone and the vibe is off. 
My girlfriend looks kind of withdrawn at her desk. People are buzzing. Matt looks furious. The treats are now on Matt's desk. Turns out somebody emptied the contribution tin and left a note saying that the last few baked goods were not quote unquote up to par, end quote. What the fuck? So they'd emptied the tin of the money as a form of refund for past contributions. Oh. Girlfriend had a hard night. She thought about baking something gross as revenge. She got upset thinking maybe her baking really is bad and considered giving up on baking altogether. I told her to consider stopping giving them away for free. The next day, I'm called into a meeting. Most of upper management, client services, etc. We're talking about the baking and the note, and people are pissed. I'd love to say it was because my girlfriend was universally adored, as she should be, but it was mostly because of the bullying and how the baked goods were free for the company, but great for the morale. That's... <laughs> I love how the company's just using her. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. It'd be like that. Uh, Classic. Matt, Matt spoke to my girlfriend and basically said if she wanted to keep baking, he would love it. And a few colleagues had decorated an empty desk on the third floor specifically for people to share their baked goods under a camera and near my team. The tin was replaced with a tiny padlock. Next time, Karen appeared for a treat a woman from my team jumped up and stopped her, telling her that they weren't up to par and basically told her to fuck off. <laughs> More people started baking and Matt would share the contributions uh, from the tin with everybody. A picture of the table full of amazing goodies even made it to our company website for a while. Karen ended up putting in a complaint about her entire floor. Apparently, every time she tried lending a training session, people started telling her that her teachings were not up to par. She tried smoothing it over, <laughs> not by apologizing, but by bringing in a tray of cheap donuts with a stupid sign saying that there was no contribution needed and that these were actually good and free. Wow. So generous. <laughs> yeah. Those donuts had exactly two taken. One by Karen and the other returned with one bite missing and a note that said, <laughs> not up to par. <laughs> Matt even called their next team outing, quote, who loves to par, T? Jesus. <laughs> Apparently, Karen started complaining that she was trying to inspire my girlfriend to do better and that by buying her own treats was a way more expensive and that she needed a little treat to keep going some days. That now, because more people are baking, she should be thanked because she actually inspired them as well. That she didn't oh. know how to get past my team, who she couldn't insult and historically suck up to. Karen tried demanding that the snacks move downstairs, but was told that the note was deemed bullying and the downstairs canteen without cameras wasn't up to par. This went <laughs> on until COVID hit. Anyways, fuck Karen. And my girlfriend's baking is the fucking tits. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, she wanted her cake and eating it too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's that's insane. I mean, the, the, my mind the whole time was like, I can't believe the fucking corporate workplace is just taking advantage of these people and making other people pay for it <laughs> instead of paying people for it. Uh, that do be corporate life. That bro. was making me angrier than the Karen bit because she was getting the karma anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was like, okay, yeah, she, she definitely deserve to get bullying but at the point where upper management is also bullying i'm like is this not That's a, a little, little weird bad? Yeah, power dynamic <laughs> this, is a little, sure. <laughs> this feels a little bad but she definitely deserves i'm just saying i'm turning i'm turning the other cheek i'm like <laughs> complain oh shred box <laughs> <laughs> no for sure I'm like, I'm like this, she this complaint is not up to par so i'm gonna <laughs> focus it. on something else yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the up to par is fucking hilarious. That is a good want bit. to just fucking, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a good bit. Uh, yeah. I don't know how it's technically allowed, but I guess if your HR is also upset about it, then yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah. But kudos to her for fucking, uh, I don't know, sticking to her guns. Pretty stubborn. Pretty I was crazy say, very to stubborn. bring in donuts and then be like, these are, when the whole office is against you. Wow. Yeah. Just standing uh, 
like ten toes I, deep for yourself is. I would have had some is. sort of sympathy if she had any sort of remorse, but she just no. kept doubling no, down. Double, <laughs> she kept doubling, tripling down, <laughs> which is crazy. The, the fact oh. that it ended with her being like, and honestly. I'm the reason for this me. whole third floor <laughs> dessert table. Y'all should be fucking thanking me. I inspired all of you, which is just, uh, guy, you know what? Actually, this, maybe she deserves the bullying. <laughs> yeah. Main character syndrome to the T. Oh, baby. so much. Crazy. Yeah. But like I said, I'm joining in on that bullying. <laughs> oh. Before we move on to Alex's game, we do have to do a little bit of an ad break. No smooth segue this time. I'm so sorry. We'll be right back. And we're back. Oh, before we're back. Gotta say, that ad break was up to par, Sean. I do. That, that was <laughs> really you. good. That was a good Thank way you. to put it, though. Wasn't up to par for me. Uh, wow. Mm. <laughs> Can't wow. talk, Josh. You Appreci- fumbled it last episode. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm not stressed enough, clearly. All right. Are we all ready for Alex's... Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. For the amazing Underbakis game of the week. Thank you. Thank you. I was like, who is Alex? I only know the amazing, <laughs> the <underbar>. amazing Alejandra. <laughs> We're switching yeah, it up this name. week. <laughs> that's not her name. How dare you? I'm, I'm putting my, what did you say? Dragging my heels? Or what, what? I don't remember what the fuck. No, no, it was on the Patreon. Digging no one down. knows what you're talking about, right? Oh, no one knows. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep oh, going. I forgot. Yes. All right. For this segment, our Alex, our Alex, for this segment, <laughs> our writer, Alex, the amazing <laughs> underbaki has proposed two separate Would You Rather options for us to answer. If you have never played Would You Rather, it's quite simple. You're given two options and can only pick one of them. For example, would you rather eat a boiled hot dog with no bun or eat a burnt chicken burger with a bun? Make only... Oh, wait, can I choose that one? (laughs) I also have a funny story about hot dogs, but uh, when I was younger, I hated like cooked hot dogs and I would only eat them frozen. (laughs) Ew! <laughs> Frozen glizzies for years. <laughs> Josh, that is weird. Yeah, that's probably the weirdest food thing I've had. That's like I, uh, when I'm I mean, looking a, back on it now, I'm disgusted. But it's the only way I would eat them. <laughs> that reminds me of like seeing those videos of people. I forget what part of the United States, but they just eat like raw ground beef, just spoonfuls. Oh. They just eat it like that. God damn it! It's just. I mean, technically, I guess that's. Maybe safe? I don't know, but... Uh, I don't know where salmonella... I guess salmonella is yeah, maybe not in that. I have no yeah, idea. not in beef, I don't, I don't think. Interesting. Know. Either way, unhinged. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. That was, that was my hot dog story. <laughs> Frozen glizzies. Yeah. Oh, my God. Crunchy. All right. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck did you just say? He said crunchy. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Would you rather question number one? Would you rather tell your in-laws that you and your partner are moving to a different country within the next three days out of the blue or travel with your in-laws on an off-grid bonding trip for three weeks? Oh, off-grid with my in-laws. I fucking love my in-laws, bro. They're hella cool. Yeah, my issue that. is not with the in-laws on the off-grid. It's I would be uh, <laughs> without electricity or anything for three weeks that would suck <laughs> but i would do that one probably uh yeah, depends like on the a, country i'm moving to i guess but off grid private island on a on a mansion yeah sure <laughs> i mean yeah sure i guess if that's the I scenario guess if that's an option then yeah i choose yeah. that one <laughs> i'm picturing yeah. you in the middle of the woods or a cabin somewhere <laughs> wilson <laughs> <laughs> all right next one this might be a quick game would you rather question number two would you rather give yourself your own Brazilian wax or bleach someone's butthole? And that someone oh. being a random person you met on a subway and have only known for 20 minutes. Oh, I'm waxing my own damn self, bro. <sighs> yeah, I think so as I well. I fucking hate people. <laughs> <laughs> Especially strangers that I don't know. Yeah. What the fuck am I going to bleach someone's asshole for? You are the asshole. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I have much interest in seeing a stranger's butthole. Uh, no matter where I meet him. Subway, an Uber, uh, a Quiznos. <laughs> Not interested. Eat, <laughs> Eat fresh. Eat fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Same joke. Wow. It's bleached. <laughs> Not clean. <laughs> uh, White meat. Oh, God. <laughs> goodness gracious. All right, well, that's it for this 
<laughs> it was only two weeks. It's a quick one. Wait, it's come up with one. another one, Sean. Give me another one. Uh, Give me would, another one. Would, would rather. you rather? This is. This reminds me of we had. We used to have. Would you rather as a, a game on Reddit on Wiki, and then we just we were like, dude, half of our would you rather's is. Uh, having the body of Chris Hemsworth, but then something bad also oh, yeah. happening. <laughs> it's like you almost half of thoughts? our would you rathers. Oh, what did I say? I you don't said, read it on Wiki. Yeah, Wiki. I get the two confused. Yeah, we used to have a game on Shots and Thoughts, and uh, almost half of them were like, would you have the body of Chris Hemsworth or, you know, and then we were like, this game is a bust because all we do is think about Chris Hemsworth's abs. <laughs> all right, quick all right, one. So, would you, so would rather, you rather have the body of would, Chris Hemsworth? No, we're, we're, I've learned my <laughs> lesson from that. Would okay. you rather get a million dollars each time uh, you shit your pants? Okay. Or, or <laughs> see, this is why this game doesn't work. Or have the body of fucking Chris <laughs> J. Hemsworth. <laughs> I'm shitting my pants all day, baby. I'm having Chris Hemsworth body. <laughs> I can make money off that. I could be ashamed and rich at the same time. No problem. And plus, people will stay away from me. So I'm going to be rich and that there's no one around. That is John's dream scenario. I really <laughs> that is yeah. true. You gave stay him, away from yeah. me. You, just, you, you lofted that one to him. And Not he only does John yeah. become rich, but he uh, has a, an excuse to never see people. Yeah. <laughs> and just in his home, shitting his pants every second he can. All day. And I poop four or five times a day, baby. I'm going to be, I make four or five million dollars a day. God damn. damn John's a dream scenario. Good. I fucked up. I'm not getting that's why I leave it to Alex. <laughs> <laughs> would you what would you have, son? Chris Hemsworth body? Chris body. Yeah, Chris Hemsworth body for sure. Then oh, OnlyFans, damn. I'm making the million back. Yeah. With clean pants. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> see, I ain't gotta work for it. I just shit myself. <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, that's it for this episode, boys. I did not have the time to Venmo, but I will read them on either John's episode, if there's time, or my next episode. But yeah. there are Venmos that need to be read. So thank you guys so much for Venmoing. And uh, I'll leave it up to John and Josh. If you'll have any reviews, comments, merchandise bot, anything like that. I have a couple, and it's going to be very short. Uh, Sean kind of alluded to it earlier already, but Juliet did release a cookbook. And um, if you would like to support her, uh, she did that on her own. She did an amazing job. I do eat all the food. And peek behind the scene. This is not on the recipe book, but she just handed me dinner. And Sean, you're going to get pissed off at Ooh. this because it is Chilean sea bass <laughs> with miso <laughs> butter, baby. Wait, how is that not on the fucking, in the book? I know. That but one's iconic. Maybe, Chilean sea bass is maybe iconic. Maybe that's going to be at the part two if volume she ever makes two. one. Yeah, volume two. Very random but, cookbook, volume two. Yes, but it's called a really random cookbook and it's going to be on Etsy. I posted it on our Discord as a pin channel, but we'll also put it on the, um, the show notes shout out to the you know the 18 people that bought it ready so Hell appreciate yeah. y'all yeah. uh, julia out. is very happy very pleased she's like if, if a few people bought it i'd be happy so uh yeah she's very proud of it i'm very proud of her uh food's really good and uh, i get to benefit this is why i weigh 205 pounds guys because she eats so well or she eats so well she cooks so well that's awesome um, also I uh, wanted to give a shout out. Uh, I got a, a, a very nice message on Instagram and uh, I, I do tend to like uh, avoid comments. But, you know, when I see a nice one, always got to find a way to spotlight it because uh, people took the time to uh, write something nice for us. But this is from Francis. Uh, uh, Francis messaged us and they put, hi guys. I'm sure since this is Insta, John will be the one to see this. Yes, I've seen Correct. it, Francis. Um, <laughs> I love watch Reddit on Wiki every single day and have seen most episodes wow. two or three times. Oh, Whoa. Shit. <laughs> that's a lot of episodes, Francis. That's like what? If it's two to three times, that's almost 600 times you've listened to us. As many times as I've on, listened to them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Apologies. Uh, yeah. So yeah, sorry uh, for that. I, I mean, uh, Francis. <laughs> Francis, uh, I wanted to tell you guys how amazing I think you are. I really struggle with my mental health and listening to you guys have helped me so much. I have bad panic attacks and put the pod on when I'm stressed or upset. We recorded this uh, upset and stressed, Francis. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, uh, I am in recovery and part of my emergency emergency plan is listening to the podcast because I know it makes me happy. Thank you for everything you do. 
Uh, and they put, I would love it if you shared this on the show or with the guys. Francis, here we are sharing it with you. Um, and of course, I responded back, um, you know, like we've seen it, like uh, ho- uh, with your permission, we'd love to share. And they put, yes, please. I would love for the other guys to hear this too. And they also put, also, I'm doing better now. I'm in college and almost two years sober. So congratulations, hey. Francis. Yeah. We're here for it. We are cheering you on. We are your personal cheerleaders. You can do this. And we appreciate you uh, for, for rocking and supporting with us. And and also sorry for having to listening to uh, listen to us for <laughs> almost 600 times. That's like at least 600 hours of your life baby girl i hope you're okay <laughs> holy shit yeah I'm doing that math that's crazy <laughs> that's, that's a lot that's that is a lot, lot. Uh, yes yeah that's awesome thank you very much you for- might have spent more time with us than our own loved ones <laughs> <laughs> right. that's true that's crazy thank you francis uh, i'm glad francis, that you know yes you know like john said we're always rooting for you uh always so proud of you two years sober that's fantastic college very proud and uh hell yeah i'm glad that you know we could be a part of your your journey, and that you know we're a part of what makes you happy. That's uh, it's, it's really great. It's crazy. We've been reading a lot of negative ones, so, so it's crazy to <laughs> That's hear. That's why uh, I'm like I'm staying away from that yeah. shit. All positive vibes it's, for me, baby. It's nice to hear a, a nice one for once. Uh, so thank you so much. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I mean, we usually see positive ones as well. It's just yeah, the yeah, negative ones stick in your brain the, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, some because uh, I I feel like some are nitpicking our very littlest thing that we've ever said but <laughs> yeah yeah but uh yeah thank you so much francis all right are you good john then i'm good all right so Where's yours brother i've got a couple merch messages from uh <laughs> some people so uh, we got ashley who says my full price on this item is my support i hope you enjoy the profits except for sean and then she puts a <laughs> winky face <laughs> winky face <laughs> oh okay wow. okay okay and they bought a i hate boys bomber jacket so hell yeah Ooh. Uh, bomber got, jackets? That's fucking sick. Hey, yo. Some of the items. Some of it, like, so uh, our Pump Kevin and, and Ring Ghost merch, they don't look great on hats. Uh, so they only work on, so some some items do and some items don't on some. Did you see the Discord? <laughs> no. Oh, what happened to Discord? No, people were giving Halloween ideas for uh, Kara. <gasps> oh. oh, I should check that. I haven't checked it for like a couple candy days. corn and Kara. Oh. <gasps> I like a that. chocolate chocolate chip. I chippa. like that. <laughs> uh, we'll have to do those then. So Katharina buys a Pump Kevin mug and they say, hi guys, hey, loving mug. this new collection. I've always wanted a Corgi, but until ne- I am a rich motherfucker, I'm going to stick with this Pump Kevin mug. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, Let me know if you want pictures of Kevin. <laughs> I got you. My camera roll is just filled with nothing but Kevin pictures. I thought you were gonna Honestly, just straight too. up offer Kevin. Just for a send second. Kevin. I was over. like, holy moly! <laughs> Could never. <laughs> <laughs> as much as that guy pisses me off, I love him to death. Hell yeah! Uh, Daniela says, "Thanks for giving me an excuse to buy your spooktacular merch. Love the podcast. Listen three plus times to each episode. Brings oh, me so wild. much joy. Smiley face. And they also sent a ten dollar donation with that." Whoa. Uh, so that's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Uh, Christina says, love you guys so much. And the new merch is fantastic. The $10 are going to put the never change the intro song fund. LOL. Oh, wow. And they donated $10. I feel, like, I, I, I feel like the never change group, they, they, they put it, they put it out there. Be like, don't change it. <laughs> Money talks guys. Yeah. The civil war. <laughs> the civil war. Uh, Allison says I couldn't pass up the adorable Halloween merch. Keep up the great work, guys. Love you. Uh, thank you, Allison. Alexa says thank my you. favorite podcast. You guys get me through a long work drives and have me in laughing in tears all the time. Thank you for Roe. Uh, hopefully it's good tears. Hopefully they're just crying because we're so- <laughs> <laughs> it's like these my stories are so fucking, fucking depressing. <laughs> these jokes are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alyssa. Uh, just wanted to say I love your guys' podcast. You have a great uplifting community. Thank you for all you do. Keep doing what you're doing with the heart emoji. And they send fifty dollars along with Whoa. buying a hey, bunch of merch. Yo! Yeah. Alyssa, thank, you, so much. thank you. That is amazing. Uh thank you very Our much. Community every- is fucking awesome, by the way. Oh yeah. Uh, My favorite aspect. Absolutely. Dude, it's so crazy. All of y'all bonding together and like sharing stories and like the Discord is still Fucking popping every day. It's so crazy. You guys are it's like amazing. What, 800 people on the Discord now just just talking so and just many. hanging out. Fucking love it, man. Yeah. It's awesome. 
Uh, and then, yeah, there's there's other people that bought merch, uh, but those were all the donation messages. Oh, I did want to sneak in this. I uh, just want to say congratulations to Ali and Connor. So, like, Ali uh, has submitted a bunch of stories uh, with us before where her crazy, like, dating stories in the past. Okay. Um, she's got married over the past weekend, and uh, hey. Julia and I were invited. <laughs> so, like, congratulations, Ali and Connor. She's a, She listens to the show a lot. Also a listener of Shots and Thoughts, Sean. So, uh, oh, congratulations. That's, uh, she had the ghost story, right? Or the spooky Airbnb? Yes, yes. yes. Spo- spooky Airbnb and the, uh, the um, what was that? Like the body parts were like on fire because of that. Oh, yes. It was, it was a crazy dating story that yeah, she's had. Yeah, I remember that yeah, one too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like uh, shout out to you. Hell yeah. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, that's awesome. it, was a be- it was a beautiful wedding. Uh, glad to be part of it and uh, ate a lot of your food. So thank you for inviting <laughs> us. All right, well, that's, that's it. it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for listening and just being a part of the community. We are truly nothing without you guys. But until then, and by then I mean Wednesday or Friday, depending on your level of poverty or not, uh, we'll see you guys <laughs> then. Love you. Bye. Speaking of poverty, I'm just going to eat Bye. my Chilean sea bass You're fucking over Chilean here. sea bass, you rich, rich <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Drunk drive mode activating. I got this, Haas. <laughs> <laughs> what?